heard that you recently started using PDM Standard. By now, you've likely began using PDM to take your business to the next level. We'd love to take a deeper dive into PDM and show you some of the best practices to get you started. SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard gives you the ability to send notifications to both yourself as well as colleagues for various reasons. There are two types of notifications, manual notifications that you can send explicitly and automatic notifications generated by state changes of objects. Automatic notifications are triggered by actions on files and folders. We can set up automatic notifications so that you are notified when files are checked in, checked out, or change transitions. Automatic notifications can be set by right-clicking on a folder or a file. Let's start by right-clicking on this project one. We can navigate to notify and choose me when. When you select that, a dialog box will open. It'll allow us to set whether it's a workflow state, whether the file's been checked in or checked out, and various other reasons. Let's set change workflow state. So our source state is released. Our destination that we want to set is work in process. What this will do is for any transition that goes from release to work in process in this folder, we'll be notified so that we know if a file is going to be taken from production to an editing type state. We can have this set for only files that I've created or only if I've changed the state the last time. Let's leave it set to that. We can click OK. From here, our notification manager dialog box will open up. We can see what the notification will be. It's when state enters work in process from all documents release. And we can manage if this is activated or not activated. We can click OK. The next thing that we can do is we can set it for specific files. We can right click here again, hit notify, and we can simply say me when checked out. Let's go into our notification manager under my notifications. We can now see that we can view both of those notifications that we've set. We can edit them when they're selected, remove them, or add additional folder or file notifications directly from this manager. We'll click OK. And now let's take a look at manual notifications. So we can right click on this file again, click notify, and now we're going to select a colleague instead. This will also open up a dialog box, similar to if you're sending an email. You can give the notification a subject and then add a description. We can choose who it gets sent to and then send the message. SOLIDWORKS PDM revision tables allow us to automatically add table rows with updated variable values through a workflow transition or the set revision command. By default, there are five revision columns which include rev, description, date, approved, and zone. For this example, we're going to take a look at setting up the rev column. First, we'll need to enable revision tables. In the administration tool, go to SOLIDWORKS and open revision table. Check enable revision table and set the number of visible rows. You can leave the asterisk in the revision placeholder character. Click OK. Next, we'll need to map our variables. Expand your variables node and go to revision. We'll add a new attribute and set the block name to SW rev table. Change our attribute name to revision and set the file extension that we're focusing on to SLD DRW to focus on SOLIDWORKS drawings. Click OK. Finally, we'll need to add set variable actions to update the variable in any transitions that include revision actions in our workflow. We'll do that here on release documents. 
go to Actions, Add Action, make our description right, Revision, Table, Variable, to Data Card. Make our type set variable. Only run for files with SLD DRW extensions. And then we'll set our value to next revision. And click OK. We now have the set variable action. Click OK again. SOLIDWORKS PDM standard can convert a SOLIDWORKS drawing file to PDF during a workflow transition. Let's take a look at how we can configure the drawing to PDF convert task. In the administration tool, expand the tasks node and open the convert task. In the dialog box on the left hand side, click execution method. Let's select the client computers that can be used to execute the task and how task execution is initiated. You must configure each client computer as a task host to appear in the list. Each client computer must have an active SOLIDWORKS license in order to run the task. Next, let's click Conversion Settings. Under Source File References, specify the version of the referenced files to convert. We can either use the referenced version of the files as built, or use the latest version of the reference files. I recommend sticking with this method. If variables between the SOLIDWORKS drawing and the PDF's data cards differ from each other, click File Card to map the variables. We can add variables here and map them between the two file types, source and destination. Now let's click on Output File Details to specify the output file name format and destination. We can use the arrow here to set up a dynamic file path. Output paths can only be specified to be inside of the vault. We can view an example here to see how it might output. Once you're finished, click OK.